In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my brand new cash budgeting system. We are going to talk about everything from how I set it up as a total newbie to the exact amounts that are in every single category. I am so excited to share this with you all, so let's go make a quick coffee and jump right into it. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a really exciting video. I posted a little teaser of this video over on my Instagram and people were really excited. So I really hope you're going to like it. So don't let the ice latte and the egg sweater fool you. Today is October 1st and I am going to be putting into place a new budgeting system for myself that I am very excited and very hopeful about and I'm so happy to be taking you guys along this journey with me. So finally, 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 some of you guys are gonna be like, girl, finally. Um, finally, I am starting the cash envelopes method of budgeting. We are going to be setting it all up today. I'm gonna be taking you guys through the whole process of setting it up, figuring out how much I need to take out in cash, like what my spending is going to be for the month. We're also going to talk about what is the cash envelopes method of budgeting in case it's brand new to you. Um, and we're just going to kind of figure it out together. And later on, I will update you guys on how it goes, but I wanted to have a kind of starting video to one, hold me accountable and two, maybe inspire you guys to check it out as well. If controlling your spending is something that you're hoping to work on. Now I've been saying this like crazy, but I just feel like fall for me is get your shit together season. It's been that way since I was in university where it was like midterms and studying and I just love fall. So I'm feeling really, really motivated. I'm feeling really happy. Um, and I just wanted to transfer that energy to you guys through this video. If this is the first video of mine that you are watching, first of all, welcome. I really hope you will stick around by subscribing. And I just wanna say, I love making finance videos with the goal of inspiring you guys in a gentle but effective way and not being one of those personal finance people who shames people about their decisions or makes you feel bad or anything like that. So I hope this will be a fun and safe space for you. I hope you like this video and I hope maybe by the end of it, you feel inspired to take a look at your finances, maybe try out the cash envelopes method and all of that. Now I am not an expert on this method by any means, like I'm just trying it for the first time today, but if you're watching this and you're like, what the heck is the cash envelopes method? Let me give you a really quick recap. So the cash envelopes method is a method of controlling your spending by taking out cash and only spending cash. However, it goes one step further than that by dividing your cash into various categories so that you have an exact amount that you can spend on groceries, on gas, on eating out, on coffee, on your dog, etc. The rule is that if you overspend in one category, so if you go to the grocery store and you're $5 over the amount of cash you have left, you can take it from another category, but you cannot refill any of your categories until the month is over and you refresh or the week, however you choose to do it. I'm gonna be doing it by the month. So you have an overall spending budget that you take out in cash, you divide that up between your categories and that's it, that is your spending for the month. I tried to do something similar by using a prepaid card and that really helped me for about two to three months. However, because the prepaid card wasn't detailed by segment, I got kind of carried away and I would overspend or I would buffer up with my actual credit card and it just didn't really work out. So I'm really excited to try this method. So now let's talk a little bit about my story as well as why now is the right time to try this method. I'm not going to go back to the beginning of my personal finance journey in this video. I have a whole playlist that you can watch and follow along, but essentially I went from being a crazy shopaholic living paycheck to paycheck while making $65,000 as a consultant, um, Canadian to a lot better, but still not yet where I want to be. I'm still at a point where every single month when I sit down and review my budget, because I don't really have a budget, um, I sit down and review my spending, I'm always shocked and a little bit disappointed at certain things that fall through the cracks. Typically, these will tend to be online purchases and they also often tend to be on a whim purchases. 
A lot of the times these are things that I've been influenced to purchase via social media, not even influencer ads, but more just like I'll see a photo and I'll really like this girl's outfit. And then I'm like, okay, I need new jeans and new shoes. Um, or I'll see like supplement supplements really get me. That's one. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter what it is. The point is that you can buy whatever you want. You can have whatever you want in life as long as you can afford it. And right now I'm just not at a point in my life where I can afford to purchase everything I see and desire on a whim and that's okay. But that being said, I don't have any systems in place currently to control my spending. I spend mostly on credit in Canada. Our banking system is really messed up. I want to say where pretty much costs you money to use your debit card, which really pushes people in favor of spending on credit and the credit cards, they want you to spend as much as possible so that you can not afford to pay your bill and pay interest and they can make money, right? So when I spend on credit, I'm spending future me's money. I'm not spending money that I currently have in my bank account, which leads to this feeling of always playing catch up. So I still kind of have that feeling of living paycheck to paycheck. That being said, I'm not earning the same salary as I used to back when I was working as a consultant. Now I work as a freelancer um, and I'm still building that business. So that's a little bit different as well. But for that reason, for the reason of building my business, for the reason of working on my finances, and also just for the reason of wanting to control that spending, I have decided to put into place the cash envelopes budgeting method. I have heard about this method for so long and I've always just kind of made an excuse of why I shouldn't do it, why not? Like, oh, it's too complicated. Oh, I don't wanna carry cash with me. I don't wanna carry a bunch of envelopes with me. Um, oh, it's COVID and people have stopped accepting cash, right? I always had an excuse why not to do it. And I think a lot of those excuses came from being scared to change, not really wanting to change. There's a part of me that likes maybe the chaos of my financial system, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I will have to do a dissection, I don't know. But finally, you guys, a sign came to me in the mail and I just felt ready. I think what I'm about to show you, plus the fact that, like I said, it's fall and I'm feeling really motivated, um, just got me in the mood and I'm like, why not just try it? So a subscriber very lovingly sent me this package. They own a stationary brand called The Line based out of Vancouver. And they were like, Zoe, we would love to send you the cash envelope system that we have. We think it would really help you out. And I was like, you know what? Let's go for it. So they so very generously sent me this cash envelope system. And you will see what I mean when I show it to you. I was instantly motivated to try it because these are gorgeous custom made cash envelopes in a plasticky material. I got to customize exactly what they said. So you can see it says Maggie for my dog. We have one that says treat yourself, transportation, business expenses, home, dining out, groceries, and coffee. So I took a moment and reflected when they sent me this and I chose these as the categories that I normally spend on. And what's amazing is you guys may have noticed these little holes. These clip into this folio from the line so you can comfortably carry all of your cash around in this folio. There's also a clip in paper segment here that says category and the balance, the starting balance, so you can write down as you're on the go everything that you spent. So I'm really, really grateful for the girls at the line for sending me this. You guys can purchase this yourself if you would like to start this method and you kind of want to do it in style. I know it may feel counterintuitive to spend money to start a budgeting system, but if that's what it takes to hold you accountable and to make you feel motivated, I think it's a worthwhile investment. Um, and these are amazing. So now the next step is to head over to my desk. I need to sit down and review my spending and think about what do I want to put into each and every category? So let's head over there and do it. So I'm sitting at my desk, I've got everything all laid out and the vibe is also totally set in my apartment. Sometimes when I sit down and do things related to my finances, my financial anxiety can tend to bubble up a little bit and financial anxiety is anxiety related to finances. For me, it can often come in negative voices, negative self-talk telling me like, oh, you're so broke, you'll never succeed at this. Like, 
you're, you know, just not, not nice stuff. Um, so I like to create a really positive environment in my home whenever possible when I do these things. Um, so today I set some candles. I'm gonna listen to some music during this next step. Of course we have the coffee and you don't need to go all out and above and beyond to do this. Like you could literally do this from your car. Um, but whenever possible, just doing little things to make it a comfortable and safe feeling environment for yourself, I think can take budgeting from being something that's super, super scary and overwhelming to a fun activity. Like I'm literally doing this on a Saturday. There's other things I could be doing, but I'm choosing to be here and do this because it's important to me. And so I'm rewarding myself by setting up all of these nice things around it as well so make it fun and you won't put it off and yeah let's just take charge of our shit you guys let's do it okay cheerleader zoe before i go about choosing some amounts i want to just kind of fact check <laughs> I want to kind of fact check what I know about the cash envelopes method. So I'm going to go onto YouTube, which is my very best friend, look up some videos about the cash envelopes method, and I will report back. watched a video. I only watched one because I felt like it was very thorough and it told me everything I needed to know. I will put the name of the channel here on the screen. It was called on the screen. <laughs> it was called Monet's Money and she did a really like um, that was a great video. Um, she said a few things that I really, really liked. The most important, which I think is why this method works so well, is spending cash is more painful than spending on your credit card and it makes you it just makes the act of spending money more conscious. And I think a lot of the times when I make those impulse purchases that I was speaking about at the beginning, it's because it's so easy to just tap your phone when you have Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, whatever, on your phone, to just input your PayPal when your credit card's already saved, right? You don't feel like you're actually spending money and then you get hit with that credit card bill at the end of the month. But when you're actually handing over cash, and she did this funny thing in the video where it was like, ooh, handing over the cash, it's so true, it really feels feels more impactful. So she said for her, that's why this method really works. And she said for her, it also helps her really track every single category that she's spending in. For me, I do track those things. So I don't think that's going to be the biggest perk. I really see this just reducing and also putting a cap on the spending. Like there's only $400 in your grocery envelope you can't go over it, girl. You know what I mean? So I have decided on the amounts for every single month. I am going to now go to the bank and take out that money, and then we will fill the envelopes together, talk about each and every amount, as well as why I set that amount. But first, let's go to the bank. That was absolute torture. I've misplaced, well, I know where it is, but I don't have my debit card on me. So I had to actually go into the branch and wait in line and it took forever. <laughs> oh my gosh. But we did it, I've got my money. So now it is time to stuff the envelopes. That's what they call it. Um, and let's talk about the totals. So in the video that I just watched, something that Monet mentioned was the fact that this system does have a little bit of an adjustment curve to it. The first month that you decide on your totals, you're not gonna have like the perfect number. It might take a few months, she said, to adjust and really figure out exactly what you're spending and in which category. So that just made me feel really reassured that like, okay, if I slip up, if I make some mistakes, if I didn't choose the exact right amount the very first month, it's okay and you can keep adjusting as you go. I think another thing that sort of deterred me from starting this method was the fact that I was scared that I needed to be perfect. Um, so you don't need to be perfect. That helped reassure me a lot. Um, so let's talk about each category and the amount that I chose. Starting with the groceries category, this has been my number for over a year now and it is $400 a month on groceries or $100 a week. For me, that is a number that works. It is a number that I feel comfortable with um, and it's a number that actually every month I usually stick to or hit just below. Um, so that is a good one. So let's pick out $400 and put that into the envelope. Two, four, six, 
eight, 100, two, four, six, eight, 200, two, four, six, eight, 300, two, four, six, eight, 400. That is a lot of money I find to have on hand at once. Like I'm really not used to carrying cash around at all. Um, so it definitely feels strange. The other thing you guys that Monet said in the video that I really liked was you don't actually need these fancy systems to start. You can just buy envelopes from the dollar store and she showed it with that. She also had some custom ones that looked really cute and in a folder, but she was like, I'm gonna show you guys just the basics. Um, so you definitely don't need these, but I've gotta say they look pretty cute. I mean, that is definitely very satisfying. My next category is dining out. This is one that I had a little bit of a harder time deciding the total amount for because some weeks I don't dine out at all, other weeks I do. I also most often am dining out with my boyfriend where he'll pay for both of us or I will pay for both of us, which makes it a little bit harder to budget. So the number that I settled on was $40 a week. Hopefully I will end up spending less than that, um, but I wanted to kind of highball it a little bit so that way if, you know, I don't feel disappointed if I don't do perfectly my first month and like run out of money. Um, the other thing that I just find crazy is how expensive dining out is now. Like even just going to like a fast casual restaurant for two people can cost more than $40. It's actually insane. So that also caused me to have a bit of a harder time deciding like how often do I dine out and where it really varies every single week. So we'll see how it goes with $160 for the month. So two, four, six, eight, one, two, four, six. Voila, dining out. Next category is home. This is another one that was very tricky because it's the kind of thing where it could be $10 for some Drano or it could be $100 for some unexpected expense. So what she explained in the video was you can also treat each cash envelope as a sinking fund, meaning you don't need to spend every dollar in here. You can kind of treat it like a mini savings account. So that's what I'm going to do with this home fund. And I have decided to put $50 a month into here. Hopefully I don't end up spending it, but what that means is I can build up the amount um, up to a certain amount that I feel comfortable with, maybe $200 and just leave it in there. So every month I'm like contributing $50 to my mini home savings account. So I got some 50s, let's just grab one of those. I got the 50s to symbolize like you're not actually supposed to spend this so that hopefully I don't end up breaking the 50. Business expenses is another tricky one because these are things that kind of come out of the blue that are mostly related to my YouTube channel. Oftentimes these are expensive things. So again, we're gonna have a little mini savings account in here. And for this, I decided to put $100 a month. The next category is transportation. This one was pretty solid actually because it's really just paying for the Metro when I go out and about here in Montreal. Gas is another story and I'm just gonna keep paying for gas on my credit card because I don't use my car that frequently. So I fill up very infrequently. So I didn't make a cash envelope for gas. What I did to figure out my transportation budget was I kind of calculated how many times on average I use the Metro per month and the individual cost of using the Metro, which led me to a total of $80. It's a little bit tricky because the monthly pass here in Montreal is $94. So I'm kind of on the fence if I should just go ahead and get the monthly pass, but I'll start out with 80 because saving $14 is still saving $14. Um, and if I end up going over, I'll maybe switch to the monthly pass. If not, we'll keep it like this. So two, four, six, eight. I gotta say you guys, this is really fun and I kind of feel like a like hustler um, with all this cash, but 
This feels fun. Next category, treat yourself. This is always where I fall into the trap. This is also the area that, especially in the fall, I really want to work on reducing my consumption, reducing my spending in this area. So I decided to give myself $100 a month to hopefully not spend um, and treat this as a little bit of a sinking fund as well. So this is the treat yourself for when you see that cute sweater, when you see that new scarf, um, and you really have to ask yourself, I only have $100 in here. Do I really need this item? Is this a deep, deep want? You know, start really asking those critical questions rather than just tapping my card or clicking the autofill on my computer. So here we have two, four, six, eight, $100. Next up is the coffee category. Going out for a coffee really brings me a lot of joy. It's really fun, but it's also very pricey. Um, a latte with oat milk has gotten up to like $7 at some coffee shops in Montreal. It is insane. I have decided to give myself $10 a week, which might seem quite high, but it really is something that brings me a lot of joy. I also want to prioritize this on working sessions at the coffee shop. So not just going and getting a coffee to go, but if I'm going to go spend $10 ish on a coffee, let's say I'm going there, I'm sitting down and I'm getting something productive done. Um, so that's kind of my goal. So $10 a week adds up to $40 a month and let's put it in here. And the last category is Maggie, my dog. I am not someone who spends a ton of money on dog stuff. I don't subscribe to like BarkBox or any of those things. Um, she is so happy just playing with an ice cube. So I don't buy her a lot of toys and stuff like that. Um, the most expensive thing for Maggie is well, actually unexpected vet bills, which we're not gonna talk about right now, um, but it's her food. It's her food, which costs me about $120 every three months. I buy like those giant bags. Um, so I've decided to do another kind of sinking fund, do $50 a month so that every three months it covers her food and then a little buffer for like a new bone or a new toy, um, something like that. So we're even frugal with the dog, you guys. When I first got Maggie, it was so easy to get carried away with spending on stuff and all the dog toys are so cute, but I really had to reel it back as well. So that's that, you guys. All of the envelopes are stuffed. This is so incredibly satisfying. Now let's clip them into the binder. And then I want groceries to go first. Then we'll put dining out. We'll put home at the back. I'm gonna put all of the ones that I want to spend less frequently at the back so that they're kind of out of sight. Make sure yourself can go more towards the back actually. Coffee, Maggie. Uh, Maggie could go last because that we only do every three months. So let's go ahead, clip it shut. Oh my gosh, this is so satisfying. The last thing I'm going to do is put a pen in here so that I can fill out those forms. Okay, so it closes up all nice. You can see I've got the pen on the side and you're looking at my new wallet, you guys. Good thing I never bought that Gucci wallet that I was dreaming of because this is my new wallet right here. I am so excited and I'm feeling so incredibly motivated. So that's a wrap on this video. I really, really hope you guys like it. Thank you so much once again to the girls at the line for sending me this gift. Thank you to everyone who commented on my videos suggesting that I try this method as well. It was honestly just like a perfect storm of recommendations and this lovely gift that motivated me to do this and I have a really good feeling about it. If you are feeling motivated to try this method, let me know in the comments or if you've tried it yourself and had success with it or any tips, I would love to hear them down below. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Oh, and I will definitely be updating you guys on this journey throughout my vlogs and also in my monthly money for the month of October. All right, see you later, bye.